Hey guys, so being that it is October, I recently watched the sequel to The Conjuring. Assuming that you've seen or heard of the movie considering you clicked on this video, you probably know that The Conjuring 2 is based off of a true story. Mind you that The Conjuring 2 is a Hollywood movie and not a documentary, so not everything is going to be exactly how it really played out. So I thought out of curiosity, why not research the actual story that the movie is based off of? And I found quite a bit of information on HistoryVersusHollywood.com. I'll try to leave plenty of links below, and I'll also try to include some pictures. Um, but I will be reading the story off of my phone from the website. Uh, there was a quote from the real Janet Hodgson um, that she gave to Daily Mail online, and it said, It lived off me, off my energy. Call me mad if you like. Those events did happen. The poltergeist was with me, and I feel that in a sense he always will be. So, I'm going to read exactly what they have online. If you'd rather check it out online and read it yourself, go ahead and click the link below. But questioning the story, when did the infield haunting really begin? The Conjuring 2 true story reveals that according to the mother, Peggy Hodgson, the haunting, and sorry if I'm mispronouncing names, but the haunting of her infield home began on the evening of August 30th, 1977. It was on that night that her daughter Janet told, that, told her that her brother's beds were wobbling. The next evening, um, Peggy heard a loud noise from upstairs. She entered her children's bedroom and saw a chest of drawers moving. She tried to stop the heavy oak chest as it moved toward the door, con concluding that an invisible force was trying to trap them in the room. Here's a quote from the real Janet Hodgson. It started in, the back, in, a, in a back bedroom. The chest of drawers moved and you could hear shuffling. Um, this is her recalling the story many years later in a Channel 4 Enfield Poltergeist documentary. Thinking that it was Janet and her siblings making the noise, she said that her mother told them to go to sleep. We told her that we told her what was going on, and she came to see it for herself. She saw the Chester doors moving, and when she tried to push it back, she couldn't. So I don't know how well you can tell by my camera, but to, um, well this side is the real Janet compared to the actress. Um... But did they hear any strange knocking coming from the walls? Yes. The knocking would fade in and out as it ran down the wall, supposedly frightening the family so much that they slept in the same room with the light on. Vic Nottingham, a neighbor, claims that um, when he went into the home to investigate at the family's request, he heard a knocking on the wall and on the ceiling, leaving him somewhat frightened. The knocking could be heard during this Janet Hutchin interview that was con conducted um, in the home. There's a link they have. Like I said, I'll try to leave plenty of links below if you want to see the real interviews and things like that. But the next question is, did dozens of crosses turn upside down like in the movie? Which, here's a clip of the movie where, if, you, if you've seen it, spoiler alert, if I didn't say that in the beginning of this movie, or in, of this video. Gosh. But no, they didn't. In fact, checking the um, Conjuring 2 by comparing it to the real Enfield Poltergeist case, we found no evidence that crosses turned upside down on the walls of the Hutchin home. In fact, the upside down cross has not traditionally been a symbol of evil. It is the cross of St. Peter who was crucified upside down because he felt that he was not worthy to be crucified in the same way as Jesus. Did the mother Peggy go to the neighbor's house for help? Yes. While exploring The Conjuring 2's true story, we learned that single mother Peggy Hodgson took the family next door and pleaded for help. The neighbors Vic and Peggy Nottingham offered to go into the home to investigate. Um, Vic quoting saying, I went in there and I couldn't make out these noises. There was a knocking on the wall in the bedroom on the ceiling. I was beginning to get a bit frightened. Did Janet really levitate? In the movie, Peggy's daughter Janet, who is played by Madison Wolf, rises high in the air and finds herself pinned against the ceiling. This is a complete exaggeration of what allegedly happened in the real life or in the real life story of the haunting. Uh, photographs of the real Janet levitating only show her a short distance above her bed. This coupled with the way her body is positioned in the air has led many people to believe that she simply jumped from her bed. The questionable photos were taken by Daily Mirror photographer Graham Morris after the family contacted the press. It should be noted that the Daily Mirror is a UK tabloid newspaper whose stories have often proven less than credible. The levitation was scary, we called Janet, because you didn't know where you were going to land. 
but supporting the family's claims were two witnesses, a baker and a lollipop lady, who were passing by outside and claimed to have seen Janet hovering above her bed as they looked through the upstairs window. The lady saw me spinning around and banging against the window, recalls Janet. I thought I might actually break the window and go right through it. So I'm going to actually show you, like I said, if you want to go on the website and see the pictures, click that link below, but I'm going to put my phone up to the camera and hopefully you'll be able to see the motion of these pictures. And it says that these are combined photographs that appear to show the real Janet jumping from the bed on two separate occasions. The first and third photographs appear to be one instance, while the second and fourth are another. Now, to me, that looks like she is jumping off the bed, but you guys can, of course, um, make your own thought of this. Now, did demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren really investigate the Enfield Poltergeist case? Yes. But to a far lesser degree than portrayed in the movie, which is somewhat misleadingly billed as being based on the true files of the Warrens. Paranormal researchers Ed and Lorraine Warren briefly investigated the Enfield Poltergeist in the summer of 1978 and were just two of the many investigators to visit the Hutchins' North London home on Green Street. Uh, most articles about the Poltergeist case don't even mention the Warrens, leading one to conclude that their role in the case was significantly dramatized for The Conjuring 2. In fact, Guy Lyon, or Leon Playfair, one of the original paranormal investigators on the case, came forward prior to the movie's release and said that the Warrens had showed up uninvited and only stayed for a day. He also said that Ed Warren told him he could make him a lot of money off the case. Ed Warren touched on the case and its skeptics in Gerald Brittle's book, The Demonologist, stating, Inhuman spirit phenomena were in progress. Now, you couldn't record the dangerous, threatening atmosphere inside that little house, but you could film the levitations, teleportations, and dematerializations of people and objects that were happening there, not to mention the many hundreds of hours of tape recordings made of these spirit voices speaking out loud in the rooms." End quote. Um, as the case became widely viewed as a hoax, some saw it as proof that the warrants themselves were frauds. Here's a picture, which they show at the end credits of the movie, of actual Ed Lorraine Warren. And sorry, my nails are gross, but, um, yeah. Now, was the 11-year-old Janet really possessed by a dead man named Bill Wilkins? While fact-checking the movie, um, there was a discovery that this part of the movie was to some degree inspired by audio tapes from the real Janet Hutchin interview. Uh, in the recording, she can be heard conveying a message via an eerie voice, which is supposedly that of Bill Wilkins, a man who had died in the living room of the house several years earlier. Just before I died, I went blind, said the voice, and then I had a hemorrhage and I fell asleep and died in the chair in the corner downstairs. An interview with Janet at the time suggests that the idea of talking in a possessed voice may have been encouraged and planted in Janet's mind by paranormal investigator Maurice Gross. When asked when the voices started, Janet said that one night Maurice Gross told them, all we need now is the voices to talk. Almost immediately following the suggestion, they did. The voices had mainly growled, barked, and made similar noises prior to this. I felt used by a force that nobody understands, stated the real Janet. She told this to UK's Channel 4, year, um, Channel 4 years later. Um, I really don't like to think about it too much. I'm not sure the poltergeist was truly evil. It was almost as if um, it wanted to be a part of our family. It didn't want to hurt us. It had died there and wanted to be at rest. The only way it could communicate was through me and my sister. On this website, they also have a link of the book, The Demonologist, The Extraordinary Career of N. Lorraine Warren by Gerald Britter, where you can buy the book there in case you're interested. Now, did the man who allegedly possessed Janet die in the downstairs living room years earlier? Yes. Bill Wilkins' son, Terry, confirmed that he had died in a manner similar to what Janet described when, he, when she was possessed. Um, Wilkins had passed away in an armchair downstairs after suffering a brain hemorrhage. Did the paranormal activity begin after they played with an Ouija board? Yes. At least according to the real Janet, who says that she and her sister Margaret played with an Ouija board just prior to the start of the supernatural activity? How many children did the real Peggy have? In researching the true story, um, 
Like in the Conjuring 2 movie, the real Peggy was a single mother with four children. Marguerite, who was age 12, Janet, age 11, Johnny, age 10, and Billy, age 7. And here is a picture of the real siblings taken by um, the photographer Graham Morris. And if you can't read that down there, it says that um, this is a picture of the siblings attempting to convey their fear while posing for the photographer. Now, were Janet and her siblings bullied at school? Yes, and according to Janet, the other kids called her ghost girl and put crane flies down her back. Her brother was tormented in similar ways. Did furniture really move? Perhaps the most credible claim of furniture moving in the home, um, in the Hodgson home at 284 Green Street involved a policewoman, um, WPC Carolyn Heaps. And I'll show you the real pictures below. The movie got, got this pretty good. Um, but she had signed a paper to the effect that she had witnessed an armchair levitate approximately half an inch and move close to four feet across the room. In all, there were more than 30 witnesses to similar strange incidents in the home. And in addition to moving to the furniture moving, they had supposedly witnessed objects flying around, cold breezes, physical assaults, pools of water appearing on the floor, graffiti, and perhaps most incredibly, matches spontaneously igniting. Um... So here's a picture of the real police officers that came to investigate the home. Uh, police Constable Carolyn Heaps, which will be on the right of the picture, uh, said that she did see an armchair appear to levitate slightly and moved three to four feet across the floor. So there's the real picture. Now, did the police do anything to help? No. Despite a female police officer witnessing a chair move, the police left after determining, or determining, determining, why can I not say this word, that it wasn't a police matter since no one was breaking the law. Now, what caused the infield poltergeist events to quiet down? The real Janet Hodgson believes that it was a priest's 1978 visit to the family's home in North London that caused the haunting to calm down, not the warren. Though the occurrences did not end completely, Peggy still heard noises in the house from time to time, and Janet's younger brother, Billy, who lived there until his mother passed, remarked that you always felt like you were being watched. Um, here's a picture of the real Janet and the actress. Um, this is a supposedly a photograph of the real Janet while possessed on the left, and then actress Madison Wolf on the right takes things to another level in the Conjuring 2 movie. Now, is it possible that the whole thing was a hoax? Yes. Two experts from the Society for Physical Research, or SPR, caught the children bending spoons themselves. They also found it strange why no one was allowed in the room when Janet was talking in her possessed voice, which was supposedly that of Bill Wilkins, among others. Janet herself admitted that some of the infield haunting events were fabricated, and in 1980 she told ITV News, Oh yeah, once or twice we faked things just to see if Mr. Gross and Mr. Playfair would catch us. They always did. In an article that was published in the year before the release of The Conjuring 2, Janet said that roughly 2% of the paranormal activity in their Green Street home had been faked. Uh, during a Margaret and Janet interview that aired as part of a TV special in 1980, Janet is asked how it feels to be haunted by a poltergeist. It's not haunted, Janet replies smiling, and her sister smiles in astonishment as if Janet just gave up a secret and whispers, shut up, through muted giggles. Janet later said that she didn't feel that the poltergeist was evil, meaning that the house wasn't necessarily haunted. Now, like in the poltergeist story, a slew of similar accounts emerged in the years following the 1973 release of The Exorcist. Some argue that the film gave birth to a culture of paranormal hoaxes carried out by those seeking money and fame. Others believe that the William um, Fredkin Friedkin, I don't know how to pronounce that, film allowed impressionable minds to become easily influenced by its demonic plot. In any case, similar alleged true stories emerged, such as the ones chronicled in The Amityville Horror, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, The Original Conjuring, and its spin-off Annabelle. The fact is, Maurice Gross did catch Janet faking at times, and here's a picture of the real Janet on the left admitting that paranormal investigator Maurice Gross on the right caught them faking things on at least one or two occasions. And this photo is again by Graham Morris.
looking at some of these real pictures compared to the movie, they did a great job casting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but the next question is what happened to the Hodgson family after the paranormal activity subsided? And when the um, infield poltergeist event subsided and the press attention faded, the family faced various challenges. Janet married young after leaving home at age 16. Her younger brother Johnny died of cancer at age 14, and the family claims of something paranormal um, being present in the house lasted all the way up until Peggy's death, at which time Janet's brother Billy moved out of the home. Janet, who will be 46 at the time of The Conjuring 2's release in 2016, lost a child herself, a son who died in his sleep at 18. She says that she didn't want to resurrect the painful memories of the infield poltergeist events when her mother was alive, but that um, she is now ready to tell her story. Now, how does the real Janet feel about the movie? Um, here is a picture of the real Janet during a 2016 interview um, about the poltergeist. So, in researching the true story, um, the real Janet was less than thrilled when she heard about the movie. I wasn't very happy to hear about the film, she said. I didn't know anything about it. My dad has just died had just died and it really upset me to think of all this being raked over again. She can be seen as an adult in this 2012 Janet Hutchin interview as well um, that will be linked in the website. Now do any of the families who've lived in the home since believe that it's haunted? After the real Peggy passed away, Claire Bennett and her four sons moved into the home. Like Janet's younger brother Billy, Claire claimed that she always felt as if someone was watching her. During the night, her children would um, get woken up by voices coming from downstairs. She then learned about the poltergeist that had supposedly haunted the home, and the final straw came when her son, um, who was age 15 at the time, woke up and saw a man enter his room. They moved out the next day after being in the home for only two months. So the website here has plenty of links um, to poltergeist interviews and related videos, and so they have like a uh, the uh, the recording of her supposedly being tossed off the bed. They have the Janet and Margaret um, interview where you can hear knocking and then also where she supposedly goes into the possessed voice of Bill Wilkins. Um, they also have an interview of Janet in 2012. They have uh, images of, and an interview of Maurice Gross. And then um, there's plenty of videos about the movie like with the trailers and things. So if you want to go to that website there's plenty of different videos to check out. A trailer to the movie and all. So two books on sale in case, in case you're interested. Um, I already told you about The Demonologist, The Extraordinary Career of Ed and Lorraine Warren by Gerald Brittle. And there is also one called This House is Haunted, The True Story of the Enfield Poltergeist by Guy Leon Playfair. There you guys go. There is the true story behind The Conjuring sequel. Um, and in case you guys want me to look up any other true stories on horror films um, like maybe the first conjuring the true Annabelle story um, I kind of want to I'm kind of interested in doing that I'd like to look up more films that are based on true stories and see what the real story was like compared to the Hollywood version again I want to quickly emphasize the fact that um, when people seem to watch these movies especially horror movies that are based on true stories they tend to get a little upset if it's not completely like point on point from the actual story and like I said in the beginning of this video do try to remember that it is a movie and not a documentary um, and they, they tell you it's based on a true story they don't say it's a hundred percent based or it's sorta of based off a true story just that it's based off a true story but thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe for more content if you haven't already and sorry that I cannot talk today my mouth is really dry um, don't forget to hit that like button too if you like this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.